The Bob Hope Show, a special rebroadcast for the American Armed Forces and their allies with Jerry Colonna, Vera Vague, Francis Langford, Stan Kenton's Orchestra, and Bob Hope. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bob Coast Guard Hope. <laughs> yes, sir, tonight we're broadcasting for the Coast Guard. These are the boys who guard the coast, and they really guard it. <laughs> but it's great to be here with the Coast Guard. That's a fighting group, and efficient. This Coast Guard outfit did such a great job during the Prohibition rum running days <laughs> that W.C. Fields almost died of malnutrition. Anything in the ocean not signed up with the Allies hasn't a chance with the Coast Guard. Every morning, whales come in to report their positions. <laughs> Coast Guardmen and Guardsmen are always with the invasion forces. In fact, by the time the Marines get a situation well in hand, the Coast Guard is charging tourists ten cents apiece to sail by and look at them. I know what side my audience is buttered on. <laughs> and the beach patrol of the Coast Guard live in little huts right down on the beach, and it's very convenient. Every time the tide comes in, they get their laundry done, whether it needs it or not. <laughs> and they don't call them huts, they call them hutlets. A hutlet, that's sort of an open-air oxygen tent. <laughs> each man patrols ten miles of beach, and they pass by so regularly, each clam on the West Coast pulls his neck in on the hour and half hour. And I don't know if those guys down there on the beaches get lonesome or not, but one fella spent three nights in a row trying to date his own echo. <laughs> I asked one guy on the beach patrol if he had to walk very much and said, I don't know, but when I enlisted, I had feet. <laughs> and the men on the beach patrol do a lot of rescue work, too. One sentry heard a girl yell, help, help, and he ran over, but before he got there, the guy drove away. I, uh... a fast car. I went for a... Uh, <laughs> I, I went for a ride today in a Coast Guard cutter and it was a trifle rough. A trifle rough, that's a nautical expression meaning very invigorating and don't crowd. I was at the rail first. <laughs> I, won't, I won't say there was much of a breeze, but it was the first time I ever spit in my own eyes. One of their five-inch guns. I don't want to brag and say I hit anything, but you know the city hall here at Long Beach? Well, it looks just as nice as San Pedro. <laughs> there's one... and, now I want you to meet... and now I want you to meet Professor Colonna, fellow Coast Guardsman who knows all about boats. And I'll take... be with you in a minute, Hope. I'm over here looking over a lifeboat. Looking over a lifeboat? Oh, Professor, kiss me again. Well, provision, aren't they? <laughs> Professor, how come you know so much about the sea? My father was part old tar. Part old tar? What was the other part? Seven. <laughs> well, have you ever had any narrow escapes with old man Neptune? Oh, no. In fact, I've never even been out with his daughter. <laughs> uh, well, when did you get in the Coast Guard, Colonna? Six months ago when I went down and enlisted in the spa. <laughs> the spars are all women. If you're in the spars, you're the only man in a group of 8,000 women. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Happy little Donata P.A. Eh, Day. <laughs> well, tell me, as a seaman, have you ever been on a yawl? Big pardon? Yawl, yawl. Oh, a southerner, eh? Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, I know a lot about yachts. Well, what was your most exciting experience as a yachtsman, Professor? I once had a schooner capsize on me. Your schooner capsized on you. What'd you do? Wiped off the bar and ordered another. <laughs> uh, truthfully, Hope, I had a little accident during my last voyage. You see, I, it was so foggy, I ran into a bell girl. 
Kelowna. No, no, you mean Val Boy. No, Val Girl. Manpower shortage. <laughs> well, was it a bad accident, Kelowna? Yes, Hope. The ship started to sink. I waited a few minutes and then yelled, Women and children first. Kelowna, you waited a few minutes and then yelled, Women and children first. Why didn't you yell right away? Busy putting on my diaper. <laughs> and here goes Stan Kenton, my hot cousin. <laughs> Romano, Sinatra with a mustache. And now I want to tell you, thank you too, Stan Kenton. And now here's something I'm sure any Coast Guardsman would be glad to guard. One of the famous four Jills in Jeep from the 20th Century Fox picture, the same engine number, Miss Carol Landis. And thank you, Bob. I must say you're very generous to me. Yeah, and so is nature. Hey. You, no, you deserve it. You deserve it. No, Carol, some of these boys came a hundred miles to hear you sing tonight. But, Bob, I can't sing. Okay. Oh, well, that's too bad. These poor boys. Now all I can do is stand here and let them stare at me. Yeah. Any, um... <laughs> Anybody want their money back? <laughs> But really, you know, these are the boys that protect our beaches, uh, Yes, Carol. I know. If you're in swimming and they're on duty, they chase you. Yeah, and what happens if they're not on duty? They chase you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're married to a captain in the Air Force, aren't you? I sure am. Well, let me know if you ever need a ground crew, will you? <laughs> Where's your husband stationed, Carol? Well, I don't know exactly, Bob, but in his last letter, he drew a little picture of himself wearing a grass skirt. That's the clue to where he is, isn't it? I hope so. I'd hate to think it's how he made out in the crap game. <laughs> uh, how are they treating you over 20th century? Oh, fine, but I'd like a contract with Paramount, too. Uh, do you have any influence there? Read it slow. Do I have any influence at Paramount? Tell <laughs> all I have to do is raise my hand, and you know what happened? What happened? They hand me a broom. <laughs> oh, you've been promoted. <laughs> Where are you taking but, your clothes from? But, really, I don't blame Paramount, Bob. I've seen some of your pictures. I know. Huh? <laughs> well, I should have more serious parts. Boy, I'd love to do Shakespeare. Oh, I can just see you now. Making an omelet out of Hamlet. <laughs> For your information, Miss Landis, Paramount had a lot of trouble signing me. I turned up my nose at plenty of contracts. 
Well, now that you've signed, why don't you turn it back down again? <laughs> Well, it comes in handy for picking up cigar butts on the beach, anyway. <laughs> Say, Karen, you live right at the beach, don't you? Uh-huh. I have a house in Santa Monica. I spent all last summer on the beach. You did? Well, didn't you see me there? I saw you once, Bob, but I didn't want to speak to you. You were too busy selling your hot dogs. <laughs> Carol, did you ever run into one of those Coast Guardsmen patrolling the beach? Why, yes. Just the other morning, I was going in for a swim, and I saw one pacing up and down the sand, and... Yeah. Gee, all this walking. Sure is hard on my feet. Already wore out three pair of bunions. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, tall, dark, and lacking. Uh, wait a minute. You a saboteur? Oh, that's silly. How could I be a saboteur? A saboteur undermines morale and distracts people's minds from their work. You're a saboteur. <laughs> Say, uh, what are your duties here on the beach patrol? I don't know. I never stopped walking long enough to find out. <laughs> well, uh, when you joined up, you should have told them you joined the Navy to see the world. I did. What did they do? Well, they brought me down here on the beach, pointed, and said, there it is, out there. Mmm. <laughs> you smell nice. Do you use eau de cologne? Eau de cologne? What's that? Oh, you know. When you get through shaving, what do you put on? My underwear. What's the matter? You don't wear any? Say, do you have many adventures when you're patrolling the beach? Yes, quite a few. Last week I stepped on a lobster and he fastened his claw on my big toe. Oh, goodness. Did you lose your toe? Oh, no, I didn't lose. I got it right here in my pocket. Mm -hmm. Have you got a girl? Yeah, I got a picture tattoo to my chest. I'll unbutton my shirt. See, that's her. Oh, she's pretty, isn't she? But what's that bandage doing on her uh, leg? Uh, that's where my dog tag bit her. <laughs> <laughs> kind of cute, ain't she? She's very cute, but uh, did she always have those big pouches under her eyes? No, those are my tamper bags. So how about meeting you tonight? Well, you don't sound very romantic to me. I, uh, I don't think you're my type. Oh, so I'll show you how I'm a romantic guy. I'll stand here on the edge of the beach and sing you a tender love ballad. You'll sing me a tender love ballad? Yep, here goes. Oh, man's a dose and dose a dose and dose and dose and dose and dose and The tide came in just in time, didn't it? Sing this to your brother in the Coast Guard, sir. Absolutely. I know you are. When I go for a walk, and I meet old friends in you, we sit around and talk, then they ask about you.
Open on my heart When they ask about you Well, after tonight's broadcast, Bob Hope and the cast will start a tour of the Southern Army camps, airfields, and service bases. First stop, Mobile, Alabama. On hearing this, the governor of California says to the governor of Alabama, He can't lose Bob Hope. You can't lose Bob Hope? No, so you take him. Maybe you can lose him. <laughs> Since he's traveling light, Bob packs almost is all cherished possessions. Nice reading. Thank you. Let's see now. I have nothing to work on. Let's see now. <laughs> now my cherished possessions. I have my yo-yo, my cards, loaded dice, and my flashlight with a picture of Betty Grable pasted on the glass. Oh, Mr. Irving! Oh. Oh, oh, I couldn't get over with that. Oh, here I am, ready to go, and I'm so excited about the trip. Are you? Oh, pretty soon we'll be on our way to Alabama, and I just love those southern men. They're so hospitable. Miss <laughs> Vague, you mean hospitable. Not when I get through with them. <laughs> Oh, dear, I can't wait till this tip starts. You know, Mr. Hope, I'm quite quick, loose. Yes, and the rest of you can stand tightening up, too. <laughs> well, well, you're feeling your oats tonight, aren't you? <laughs> of course, that nose would reach the bottom of any feed bag. <laughs> Do you think you'll like Alabama, Miss Vane? Oh, yes. The last time I was down there, I met one of those real southern colonels. A real genuine southern colonel. Well, what makes you so sure he was a real southern colonel? Well, he had eagles on his shoulders, and they had a mint julep in his car. <laughs> well, are you going to say goodbye to these post guardsmen before we leave, Miss Vane? Uh, well, no, I'm not. I'm very angry with these men, Mr. Holt. When we arrived here, they brushed me aside to get to Francis Langford. Well, that's their job, Miss Vane, to remove old wrecks that interfere with nag- navigation. Oh. <laughs> Get rid of an old delivery that's interfering with my career. Oh, bless you your heart. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> yes. I suppose it's inherited, Mr. Hope. Every time you make a joke, you're only following in your parents' footsteps. Yeah. Arrangements made for our transportation, Mr. Hope. Yes, Professor Colon is down at the railroad station seeing about the tickets. I expect him to phone any minute. Hello? This is him now. Him now? Oh, yes. How are you, him now? <laughs> are my shirts ready? Uh, hello, now, listen. This is Bob Hope. Oh, Bob Hope. Uh, now, this is silly to say. How are you, Hope? Are my shirts ready? Uh, <laughs> stop clowning, Colonel. Did you get the railroad tickets for our trip south? I certainly hope I got them right here to my hand. We go to San Francisco, then to Seattle, Juno, Bad Horse Park, Odessa, Winnipeg, and Baltimore, right to Mobile, Alabama. <laughs> Well, look, Cologne, I don't want to find fault, but isn't that taking the long way around? What do you do, Hope? It's a troop train, and they all go that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Bob. Are we almost ready to leave? Yeah, tell me, Francis, are you taking everything along in the trip? Oh, not much. Just what you see here. That's everything. <laughs> and I'm underplaying it, too. Who's paying the expenses, Bob? Oh, I'm paying the train expenses, and we'll have the same accommodations as on our last trip. Oh, gosh, and I was hoping this time we'd get to ride inside the train. <laughs> oh, uh, that's it, dear, pardon me, but I hope you won't be offended if I'm a bigger hit than you are in the South. Oh, of course not. You should be right at home in the tobacco country, Miss Fig, an old plug like you. <laughs> oh, you lovable girl, you. Responsible for what you say, dear. I knew the water on your brain had never mixed with all that peroxide. <laughs> oh, well, uh, uh, let's not argue, dear. In a short time, we'll be in Alabama. Oh, goodness, I remember our last trip there. I was a toast to the South, and I was a toast to the South. How about me? Quiet, Crumb. <laughs> uh, is Mr. Kenton and his office coming with us, Mr. Hope? Oh, uh, not us. The musicians don't like the way Bob handled things on the last trip. What's the matter, Skin? I got him on the train, didn't I? Yeah, but you should have got him tickets. Well, I let him, let him keep half the tips. I don't know why. 
What about you, Wendell Niles? What did you think of your accommodation? Can't kick. Can't kick? How oh, can I? In your trunk. Uh... <laughs> Hello? Hello, is this Bob Hope, that great, that sensational, that witty and clever comedian who follows Fibber McGee? Yes, who is this? Fibber Colonna. <laughs> Say, Hope, remember that $500 you gave me for three tickets? I'm worried about it. Why are you worried about the $500, Cloner? Oh, it's my point. <laughs> Professor, you should have had our whole trip arranged an hour ago. What's delaying you? What a time to get transportation these days, Hope. Nonsense, Cloner. There's no shortage of transportation. You're at the railroad station now, aren't you? Yes. Well, just go up to the ticket window and say, give me 20 tickets to Mobile, Alabama, please. Okay, Hope. Give me 20 tickets to Mobile, Alabama, please. You want 20 tickets to Alabama. <laughs> 20 tickets. <laughs> oh. to Captain W.F. Toll, District Coast Guard officer at the Levis Naval District here in Long Beach. Coast Guard has always met tough men and tough little cutters to tackle the oceans on stormy nights to rescue shipwrecked sailors, who bust up icebergs in our shipping lanes and keep friendly beacons burning in lighthouses from New England to the Golden Gate. Always a great name from the Atlantic to the Pacific, today it's a great name from Italy to the Marshall Islands. For it's the Coast Guard that races up to those beachheads to deliver the fighting Marines and the Coast Guard that has kept Uncle Sam's harbors free of major catastrophes the past two years, guarding harbors and vessels against accidents and sabotage to set an amazing wartime record of port security and speed shipping on its way to the battlefront. And it's the Coast Guard that's in there beside the tankers and troop ships, tossing ash cans and U-boats and taking on anything the enemy puts in their way. You know, they've got a little motto in the Coast Guard, Semper Paratus, always ready. And then, mister, whenever there's a tough job to do, you'll find the Coast Guard always ready and willing and able to do it. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.
This rebroadcast of the Bob Hope Show is a presentation of the Armed Forces Radio Service.